Yes, what do you see? Gold bags, right ahead. Ah, excellent use of a 1990s film to reference a 1912 event about a show about the 1980s filmed in the 2010s. Very good. Hard to starboard. And before we go any further today, let me just say that Lainey used the word morons in the opening. That's not something we encourage. Morons is a, is a reference that comes directly from the Goldbergs. And also, she couldn't use the actual line from Titanic because that word would be even worse. So it was a one-time exception, and you know never to use that word, right? Right. And in my case, I, well, anyway. So, all right. The Goldbergs we discovered when we went to Grandma's house. Mm -hmm. Because Grandma watches the Goldbergs. And you said your other Grandma watches the Goldbergs too, right? Because mm -hmm. you saw it there. And this is a show that is on a regular network. It's on ABC. And it's one of the few shows that we can actually watch as a family. That being said, the early seasons, because we went back to watch it from the, from the first season. In the early seasons, some of the subject matter and the language is a little bit more questionable. Um, than it is in the later seasons, at least the episodes of the later seasons that I've seen. So I had to watch one or two episodes ahead all the time so I could censor the episodes for the kids. And also there were one or two episodes that I just didn't let them watch. And one of the reasons for that is because there's three teenagers here, Adam, Barry, and Erica, and they're coming of age. So they, they talk about things and they reference things and they do things sometimes that wouldn't necessarily be completely appropriate for a nine-year-old and a four-year-old to watch. So you have to decide, am I going to censor this episode, uh, pieces of it? Am I going to not let them watch this episode? Or am I going to let them see that and use this as a teaching tool? So I, I think that it's still a good show to watch as a family. It's still a good show. You guys seem to enjoy it. I'm going to let you talk about it in a second. And the show really has a lot of heart and has a good message to it. So weighing it out some of the some of the things that are more questionable as long as i can censor it and not have them see that part but let them see the overall story and get to the message it, to me it's worth it because it is a good show with a lot of heart and it's a good family show in that way and you do fast forward some parts for us right and that's what i mean by censoring it so you're not missing anything that's terribly important for you to see the story and so you can still get the story idea out of it without, without seeing that portion. And then we can still share the show. Because I think it's, it's a good show with a nice family feel to it. And it's worthwhile because we can sit and watch it as a family. And do you like it? Mm hmm Okay. Why do you like this particular show? I like the show because there's, they're all really funny. And, like, they're funny apart, but they are more funny all together when they all have problems together. Right. I agree. It's, it's a great ensemble piece, and each one of the characters is hilarious. Very funny, very funny um, setups and situations they get into. And if you're not familiar with the show, basically, it's set in the 1980s. And as a child of the 80s myself, not only do I identify with the show, I love all the references in the show. The show even looks like it was filmed in the 80s. And it's basically the brainchild of Adam Goldberg. He's the creator of the show. And he's, it's his family. It's a story of his family, and he's the main character in it. And Adam, down here, uh, plays the, this actor plays Adam Goldberg. And uh, it's based on his home movies. He was supposedly the first kid on his in his school to have a VHS camera and he films everything with his family and at the end of each episode if you stay tuned especially through the credits uh, they always have the the VHS tape uh, footage mm -hmm. that the episode was based on and it's it's great how they actually so almost frame by frame recreate it with the actors so it's like a love letter to my generation and I love it for the nostalgia reasons reasons and how how accurately they capture Things that we, like the other day we were watching an episode where um, 
Erica, the older sister, was going to eat Pop Rocks, and she was drinking a Coke. Oh, yeah. And Barry slapped it out of her hands, and he said, no, no, no. And before he even said it on, on the episode, I said to you, oh, yeah, because of what happened to Mikey. And you, and you looked at me kind of funny, and sure enough, he said, no, don't you know what happened to Mikey? Because the urban legend of Mikey from the Life cereal box. Uh, from and then the Life Erica cereal actually did the same face that I did. Right, exactly. <laughs> So I, those pieces and parts that they pull out of the 80s era are so accurate. Now, I have heard this show cr- criticized for, like, some of their, the clothing isn't actually vintage 80s clothing or the posters aren't vintage 80s posters. I, and it's, it's something maybe they went to J.C. Penney and bought a shirt for Adam that had, like, the one episode he had a Voltron shirt. Mm-hmm. That might have been a Voltron shirt that you could buy now as opposed to one that you could have bought back in the 80s. I forgive it that because the show is so much fun and I laugh all the way through it that I don't care about that. I, I get what they're going for and it doesn't matter to me. And one time Adam had had a Voltron costume. Like right, his how, right leg was or left leg was Lance's the blue one. Right. And then red on the other Right. Leg. So he had made a, a, a Halloween costume, he made a cardboard Voltron uh, costume. So the, the thing about it is, is it, it does such a great job of bringing the 80s back and, and actually looking like an 80s filmed sitcom. And if you were ever a fan of the show The Wonder Years, which was actually a, an 80s television show about a family in the 60s, it bears a lot of similarities to that. It has the voice over the narration, just like that did with Kevin Arnold. Uh, and, and we have the voice over, it's Adam's voice over here, done by Patton Oswalt. And... It has the older brother that's kind of like always kind of bullying Adam, just as Kevin was always bullied by his older brother. It has a love interest named Dana in this one. And in in The Wonder Years, it was actually uh, Winnie was Kevin's love interest. And and they have the same kind of parallel uh, um, story arc in a sense, although it's not a copy of The Wonder Years because this really is based on Adam Goldberg's life. And you can tell that by the, the VHS footage that they show in it. Do you have a favorite character in this? Um, I think they're all really funny together. I like the mom and how Adam calls her the smother. Yes. And that's it. He calls her his smother because she's so overbearing and, and gets she she mixes in. She calls it mixing in. She right. mixes into all their business. If if one of the kids tries out for a talent show and doesn't go in get into the talent show, she goes into the school and and manhandles the principal to the point where right. he he's forced to let the kid be in the talent show even though the kid has no talent and, and it's hilarious both both what she does and then the ultimate result of it i you know if, if you're going to ask me who my favorite character was i'm like you I, I can't pick just one i love them all for different reasons i identify with adam because everything that he loves all of his star wars figures he loves star wars he loves voltron he loves back to the future he uh he every every reference he that comes out of his mouth i'm like oh my gosh i remember that or i still do that uh, so i identify with him except for the camera i mean i never had a camera as a kid other than that i i identify mostly with him I've, also you said that once when after we were watching one of the Goldbergs, you said that you would tear out a page of a book that was a Star Wars page and show your mom and oh, yes. dad and he did the same he thing. He did the same thing. When when Return of the Jedi was gonna come out, he he came to his he came to his sister and he had the ad out of the newspaper for the for the movie times for the local theater and it had the, the poster of Return of the Jedi there with the with the times mm-hmm. underneath and that's exactly what I did to grandma and grandpa when I, I, I tore it out of the thing I said look it's playing at such and such a time and I, I worked it out with my dad so that he was actually going to be painting in the in the city mm-hmm. uh, he was painting somebody's house in the, in the city and I said dad if you if you drop me off on the way I could go to the movie and then when you were coming back you could and so I worked it out the same way he kind of worked it out with his sister t- to be able to see Return of the Jedi and of course back then that's how you got the movie times out of the newspaper. You didn't. There was no. We didn't have internet or anything or a phone mm-hmm. where you could look up the movie times like we do now. You used the newspaper to do it. So it was like exactly. It was exactly my experience with that whole situation. Uh, getting back to the characters a little bit. So so I identify with Adam, although I never had a camera and I didn't film things like that. But I, I, his references, uh, I find Barry to be hilarious. Mm-hmm. The things that, that Barry does and the way the actor handles the character is wonderful. Erica 
she's kind of she winds up playing the the straight role all the time. She's always she usually doesn't get herself into trouble. She's usually bailing her brothers out mm-hmm. of trouble somehow. Plays it great. She's wonderful. Uh, the mother. It's a tour de force for the mother in a lot of ways. It really is her show. Even though it's about Adam and he's the central character, she is always involved one way or the other. And the dad is so much fun. The dad really is fun. Now, your grandpa, my dad, had a lot of similarities to, to the dad on here. Grandpa never, you know, uh, th- this guy walks around in his underwear and sits in his chair in his underwear and whatever. Grandpa never did that. But... Grandpa had a chair that he sat in. He had a routine. He'd get in that chair. He'd read the newspaper. He'd watch TV, and you weren't supposed to bother him. And he would take would he take naps in the chair. He took naps in the chair. Was he's exactly like Murray, the the father in this, in a lot of ways. In fact, for a long time, I thought the only reason that I was born was because it was before the time of remote controls. So I thought maybe that the whole purpose in my birth was to be, you know, Jim go go change the channel. So I, you know, I would sit there and change the channel so Grandpa could see what was on. Because now you do it with the remote, but we didn't have that. You might get out of the chair. So the, the dad, and then there's the grandfather that that's always over there, and it's played by George Segal, and he's very, very good in the role. He plays Pops, um, right. Beverly's father, uh, and and he's he's a great character with the kids. He, he's got his, you know, he's he's got his own lifestyle, and he's a he's a widower. And so he's always, you know, he's out dating. He's got a, a great social life, and but he's counseling the kids. <laughs> and it's, I don't know, they all have great moments, and it's a lot of fun, mm-hmm. and the references are all really good with that. Did you have a favorite episode that we've seen thus far? Not really. I can't, they're all so funny. I can't really decide. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because of all the shows, if... If you and Colton are in the other room, if you're in the playroom and I turn on the Goldbergs, the minute you hear the Goldbergs theme, theme song, song, you guys come tearing in and whatever you were doing, you drop it and you and you plop down and you yell, thank you, daddy, thank you, and you sit and you watch the it's Goldbergs. It's like a fire drill at school. <laughs> <laughs> drop like, everything. Yes, you drop run. everything and you run in and watch it and Colton just loves it. And Colton seems to really like, he says he likes everybody, but I think he likes Barry the most. Mm-hmm. And Barry, the older brother... Uh, Adam's older brother, who's in the middle here, uh, Barry thinks he's a great basketball player, or he thinks he's a great rapper, rapper, or he thinks he's a great karate artist. He always thinks he's the best at whatever, and he's really not. But he plays so he's got so much heart, and he thinks that he's great. But the thing that Colton has identified with, which is so funny, is the '80s were when rap music became more mainstream. You know, it certainly existed before the 80s, but in the 80s it became more mainstream. And Barry seems to think that he's a rap artist. And uh, he will dress up and everything. In his rap name, he has dubbed himself as Big Tasty. That's his, mm-hmm. that's his rap name. So one day, kiddingly, I referred to Colton as Little Tasty. And normally when you give him a nickname, he's like, no, nah, he, he won't. In fact, you know, um, his initials are CJ, and I did that on purpose. And I try to call him CJ, and he won't go for it. But he loves the nickname Little Tasty now. And he gets a big smile on his face and he seems to just love it. He And he loves this show. He laughs all through it. And Sometimes he laughs at the things that we wouldn't laugh at because he thinks of it as a different way. But Right. He finds things funny that we don't necessarily. but he, And he laughs at things that we do. And other things you know, go over his head and that's fine. But he really seems to enjoy it. And he likes the dad too. Mm-hmm. He likes the dad because the dad's always like, oh. And, and you know, and the, and the dad refers to his kids lovingly. He calls them morons. That's his nickname for his kids, and he does it in a loving way. So that's why we use the word in the, in the opening a little bit because it's not meant to be hurtful in any way, shape, or form. Um, and he really does. Th- that's the thing about the show is, even though it seems, I'm going to I'm going to quote it when I say dysfunctional. It seems like the family's dysfunctional. They. Every episode ends with them being there for each other, and it shows how much they love each other and care for each other, and, and that, you know, they, they, they are functional as a family, just in their own mm-hmm. way. So it's, I don't know, it's, to me, it's, it's one of the best shows on, of course, it's my era, so I, I love it for that reason, but I think it's really well done in, in every way, in, in every 
part of the cast is well done, including the supporting cast. There's, of course, Barry's girlfriend is named... Lainey. Yes, Lainey, which is one of the few times we've heard your name uh, referenced somewhere else. She's a great character. Um, Barry's friends, who, who he calls the Jenkintown Posse, which is a, a suburb of Philadelphia where the show is set, and they call themselves the JTP. And, JTP. Right, and there's some, there's some actors in there. Noah Munch from uh, iCarly, mm -hmm. who played Gibby and iCarly, mm -hmm. is in there. And then the, the coach, the, the gym coach from the school, mm -hmm. he's a wonderful character, has a lot of fun bits and everything else. And as I understand it, when the show is nearing its end or when it's done, they're actually going to spin his character off and give him his own series. So that's right. kind of a cool thing. So anything else you want to say about it? All right. Does anything bother you about it? You cool with it? No. All right. So yummy or crummy for you? Yummy. And definitely yummy for me. And, uh, you know, going back to the moron thing, I personally would rather be a moron than a more off. Is there ever a day when you can't do a joke? Mm, that day has never come.